Designing GUIs can be a nightmare, so much so that most embedded engineers may spend their whole life sending text to a Nokia 3310, but it doesn't have to be like that. If you want to up your GUI game, I suggest staying tuned because we're going to talk to Nigel, a UI designer and software developer from a company called Slint. All you need to get started is VS Code, one extension, and to watch this video to learn what Slint is, how it's saving time, whose time it'll save, and we'll even throw in an example at the end. Nigel, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. So let's let's start basic for the people at home. What is Slint? Okay, uh, I should mention. So I'm I'm Nigel Breslau. I'm both a UI designer and a software developer at Slint. And what Slint is is we are a cross-platform GUI framework uh, running on all the desktop platforms, the mobile platforms, but also the embedded space. Uh, and our aim is to make developing your user interface as quick and easy as possible. Amazing. So making it as quick and easy as possible. Are you implying that before Slint, there was a much more painful process to creating GUIs? Uh, I mean, I think... Whoa, whoa, whoa hold there. Only 12% of you are subscribed. Do yourself a favor and subscribe for daily engineering content. All right, enjoy it. GUI development is is always painful. So, so my background is, um, I mean, I used to work for uh, Nokia, and mm -hmm. uh, when we were developing, very similar to that. I mean, essentially that is the embedded space as well. But it used to be the case earlier on in my career that you'd have a designer who would create like a UI specification. They give it to the developer. They would write some code for a few days. The, the compile time that I used to have to deal with was overnight. It was actually, you couldn't even, it, they, 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 <laughs> those, those, those phones, they were so old and there was so much software had to be compiled overnight. I think these days you're looking at like maybe 10 minutes to half an hour, but yeah. um, we, we want the, I think to, to develop a really good, easy to use user interface, people now expect, especially if you're used to the web or the desktop, a uh, hot reloading mm -hmm. app that li literally compiles as you type. And, and that is what we provide with Slint. And then the other side to that is the development languages those UIs used to be in were in C, C++. So although our framework is written in Rust and you would write the underlying parts of your app, in C++, Rust, JavaScript, or Python. The, we have our own very simple language for describing the UI. It would take you like 10 minutes to get to, to grips with it. And then that will save you a huge amount of time because you just describe your user interface in simple primitives like rectangles or images. And then you compose those into bigger components like buttons and views. So what kind of engineer could benefit from using Slint? And on that point, not all electrical engineers know how to code, not all software engineers understand the underlying layers. What kind of engineer can benefit and use the Slint framework? I think anyone that is creating a, a user interface, I would say actually, if you don't know how to code, that's not even a, a barrier to entry. Is that, that really? you're going to hit you, you'll hit a wall at, at some point depending on how complicated the UI becomes but uh, in, instead of having to be like a understanding a programming language in our experience we have this very simple domain specific language it, it almost looks like a markup language uh, and, and I can right. demonstrate that but you, you literally write text for a text or image and then you would write like the, the path to your device that has the image or if it's the text you would write what the text is the font size uh, its width and its height and I don't think you need to be a developer to be able to to compose those items uh, and then you can make this uh, UI layer communicate with the, the the back end code you have for the for the rest of the app and right you can can I, can I ask a quick question about that as a whole so you're saying this language is quite far uh, or how you create a slint uh, UI is quite far abstracted, you know, from the transistors. It's sort of a higher level language. When it comes time to putting this on a microcontroller, like you say, do you foresee people running into memory issues or have you found a way to create these complex programs and slim them down to small files? Yeah, so... so you, you don't need to worry about memory from the, the slint perspective. Obviously... Uh, if you tr tr try and embed 
images and videos into a tiny microcontroller, then, then <laughs> that, 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 that isn't going to work. But and that, yeah, that's sure. not your fault. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, if, you, if you visit our website and, and look at the examples, there, there's that the whole project is there so that um, if you were targeting a microcontroller, you would describe your, your user interface using Slint and you'd have the buttons and then you'll hit compile and it will create a small binary and then you would deploy it to the device. And, and like at the lowest end is that example of the the Raspberry Pico Pi, which is less than, it has no operating system. It's a bare metal device, uh, less than 250K of RAM. And you can have, we have like a, a printer uh, demo, which is like um, the sort of UI you would expect to see on like a home printer, but just running yes. on, a, on a Pico Pi. Amazing. Yeah, I saw that on your website. Okay, so we've been talking about a demonstration. Nigel, may we see one? Yes. Okay, so first of all, uh, this is VS Code uh, using the Slint extension, which is also a fr free download. So you can get, get started without any other software development kit. And then this is our home automation demo. Uh, and I'm just showing this an ex as an example of like a quite complicated app. But to understand Slint and the language, this is the hello world. I'll just click the, the hot reloading live preview. <laughs> and, and all you need to understand with this language, and this is why I say to start with, you, you don't need to be a software developer is that you just describe things, first of all, the element name. So here I've got text and I've got hello world. And if I, uh, let me just keep the window on top. If I type Nigel, you can see it updating. If I go to the font size, you can see it instantly change size. And this is all you need to understand with Slint is that you describe things in the component names and just their properties. You compose them into larger components, and then you keep on just uh, reusing these larger components. So if I jump back to the home automation demo, you can see here the, the main screen. It's a very complicated component. If you look inside of it, there's like hundreds of slint elements. But when you're just manipulating yes. it, you just it's just at this high level, just the name and some properties. And that's what you do with Slint. You're just constantly making these simple, easy to understand components and composing your UI for it. Amazing. So that's making it readable for the next person who's going to go through here. It's nice to see when it's arranged very nicely, particularly in VS Code, in these little bite-sized building blocks. So you can go from your Hello Nigel <laughs> uh, example all the way up to a more complex home automation dashboard. Andrew, that is yeah, really yeah. cool. I think that the thing I would mention as well is that the the complex people may feel that there's a, a performance or a memory penalty you're going to pay. That's not the case. We we are just abstracting away the complexity. We take what you write here and we compile it down into like the literal machine code but you don't have to understand that. We have sort of hidden the complexity for you, from you. All you have to do is focus on making the US easy to use application for your device. Amazing. Nigel, how does Slint differentiate from other toolkits that are out there? And why might an embedded engineer want to use Slint over something else? Okay, I think uh, a few things come to mind. I think we're... Uh, fully open source projects. So if you're inquisitive, you can poke around everything. You can also contribute to the project. I think one of the differences we have is we have started from the embedded space and grown from there. You don't need to learn two different languages if you're targeting, say, desktop and embedded. And also, I think one of the things that's special about what we're doing is we're not spreading ourselves too thin. We are just focusing on helping you solve the problems of the user interface. The rest of your application, we just leave to like standard libraries in C++ or, or Rust. And that allows us to be very focused and solve this one area really well. And, and I would argue when you try the language, I would say we're also probably the most enjoyable UI language to use. It's genuinely <laughs> quick, easy, and fun. And yeah, I have a lot of fun developing with Slim. Great, beautiful. IPXs, I hope you enjoyed that chat with Nigel. 
We'll have links down below where you can start to evaluate Slint for yourself. But in the meantime, subscribe to the IPX YouTube channel to never miss a disruptive development in the electronics world. And let us know if you use this down in the comments. Stay disruptive. <laughs>